So the weather's taken a little bit of a turn around here lately. It's been cooler, it's been a little bit rainier. I think it's gonna be great for getting these guys in the ground right now. And we are gonna start with, let's see, where are we at? There it is, the Black Madeira KK. Why the Black Madeira, you ask? Because it's just one of my favorite trees. Now I know this isn't the ideal climate for planting a Black Madeira in the ground, but after buying this Black Madeira directly from Keith, and seeing the pictures that he had of this thing growing at his place in an even colder environment, I'm convinced that this thing, even if it doesn't put on the best fruit in this climate, I'm convinced it's gonna put on a massive amount of growth. And I have seen this Black Madeira fruit here at my place, so it's time to give it a more respectable place in that seven gallon pot. And there it is, the Black Madeira, fully planted. Beautiful little plant. I'm so excited to see this one actually do something here. I'm, I can't wait to see the roots just get rooted in really well and watch this thing just start growing like crazy. I've actually seen this fruit here and we got one Black Madeira to ripen. Now I know what you're thinking, Mike, this is the wrong climate for a Black Madeira but I've got some other thoughts on that. And those of you who live in the Pacific Northwest will know what I'm talking about. We get a bad rap in this area for having more rain, just more rain than anybody else in the country. But I did some research on this a few years back because I was trying to understand our rainfall in terms with my rhododendrons. And what I found shocked me. So based on the clouds, you might assume that we get massive amounts of rain, but the truth is we don't. In fact, if you look it up, you'll find that we actually get half as much rain as the highest rainfall areas in the country. The state of New York, and I think Alabama was the other one, average up over 60 inches a year, whereas our area only averages around 30 to 35 inches a year, half as much. The thing we take the record for is more cloudy days than any other state in the Union, which isn't the most ideal situation for figs. However, there's one little ace up our sleeve that we have, and that's simply Indian summers. We might be cooler in the spring headed into the summer, but we actually have long, dry, hot summers for our location. Now, the Indian summer aspect comes into play at the end of summer. Thank you, Henry. We typically have a longer, hotter, drier summer further into the season, further into the fall time. So all the way up until about the middle of October, it will be very dry around here and relatively hot for our area. And that is the ideal time of year to have all of that heat and sunshine right when these figs are ripening. Case in point, here's my Italian 258, and I absolutely love this fig. It's such a beautiful tree, and this one has outperformed the Black Madeira for me. It has produced several figs on it that absolutely taste wonderful. If I had it in a hotter area or a greenhouse, they might turn out even better, probably would, but I'm really curious to see what these things do in ground. So the next one that we're gonna plant out is gonna be my Italian 258 that I got from Herman. There she is, number two out of 34. I'm excited now that we got this in the ground. These roots are just gonna grow massive and this thing is just gonna really start taking off. Yeah, it's just my theory anyway. So after a long day of this, I'm telling you guys that uh, we don't get a lot of rain. Here we are, it's just pouring. All right, so we finally got a little break from the rain here. I finally got all of the varieties put out that we're gonna plant out in the ground here. You saw this morning, 
I planted those two, the Italian 258 and the Black Madeira. The rest of them I was just kind of setting out where I wanted to plant them. I've moved some things around. We'll go over all these varieties here shortly, but I just wanted you to get a glimpse of what all this is going to look like once we get them planted. So here's what we got in the end, 34 beautiful figs all planted out. It's going to take some time. I'm just, this year, I'm not even counting on fruit or anything spectacular. I just want to see good, solid root development. So we're going to go with this Osmocote fertilizer. It's just a nice, well-rounded fertilizer. Going to be a slow-release one that goes for about six months. So this will last all through the summer for these figs. First up, we got our little Violet de Bordeaux. And I'm going to do a scoop on each of these trees. I might actually come back and do more later. So it's been a few days now, and if you notice behind me, well, first of all, I got my little buddy with me. She's gonna help out. But if you notice behind me, we've got hay stacked up everywhere. We've got a bale of hay next to every single fruit tree out there. And I came across an awesome deal. So I was thinking, how am I gonna mulch all of these things right now? Because it's just a ton of tree, so it needs a ton of mulch. But somebody was selling these bales for three bucks a bale, trying to get them out of their barn so they can get new hay for horses this year. And I wanna show you guys something real quick. These are three bales of straw. I know it doesn't look like straw, but it is, trust me. Several years ago, we bought this as a target for my daughters when they were shooting their arrows. And they sat here for a couple of years now. I think, how long has it been, Allie? Maybe two, three years. They've been sitting here in the rain, in the snow, in the sun. And look at what they've done. First of all, straw bales aren't six inches tall. These things were a good foot, 14 inches tall when they started. And over the years, they've compressed down just naturally. And look what I found the other day when I looked at this. When you dig in between these layers, I was finding, look at that little roly poly in there, little bug. And I was digging down, I was seeing worms down in there. Look how rotted that stuff is. There's little bugs down in there and it's just moist and turning into good, rich, good, just awesome mulch. And I, if you smell this right now, it actually is starting to smell like soil. So I know that all of these bales out here are gonna break down over time and provide awesome mulch for these little figs for three bucks a bale. So what we're gonna do is come out here, we're gonna cut the ties, and we're gonna do about two flakes of hay thick, and we're gonna do just a box around each of these plants, one bale each plant, and then just kind of move on down the row. So here was my plan, Allie. Was it just kinda, we're gonna have to move this bale. Maybe I should have moved it before we started this. You got two flakes? Mm -hmm. Good deal. Thank you. Here we just go. The extras can just go down in here. So that right there is exactly what I'm talking about. And you can see that this is a good, thick layer of mulch here. Look at all that hay. That stuff is gonna break down beautifully over time. It's just gonna invite all kinds of worms. Lots of moisture gonna be retained down in there. Those roots are gonna have a good amount of space to grow into. That soil will be moist. It'll attract worms. It'll attract bugs. This is gonna be perfect to start these guys out. See, here's how you always want to pull it. See the knots here? Don't pull it that way, because that knot will drag it back through. You always want to grab it on the knot side, and then it comes through nice and clean. That comes from years of experience, girl. This one, let's do it this way. Lay the bales so that we got, narrow, we got wider between here. Yeah, 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 there you go.
Now you guys know that I am a big fan of mulch, mulch, mulch. <laughs> Tons of mulch on any plants. And what this is gonna do is suppress weeds, keep moisture around the plant so that it's got a constant supply of water to soak up from. And then it's just gonna build soil. And that's what this is all about. Four more rows to go, let's get after it. All right, we finally got them all done. Thank you so much for your help. Now what are we doing? Dinner. Dinner! She's conned me into making pancakes tonight. We're headed inside.